Hi everyone. So today I'm going to be covering the dynamic blockings. So in the past four videos I covered the static blockings, and the, those ones were more about where the elements or cognitive functions being blocked together were very sort of particular and distinct. They could be broken down into different parts which then interlock very precisely and quite firmly until broken, in which case they just break completely. So that's static blockings. Um, now we're going to cover dynamic blockings. And dynamic blockings, they're quite different in nature. They are composed of elements, or what is called in the Myers-Briggs community cognitive functions, that are more holistic and amorphous and in constant flux in their nature. So they're very fluid, you could say. There's no clear shape or outline or definition to them. They sort of blend into everything around themselves. That's the idea of dynamic elements. They, um, as a result, they, they are constantly changing. They're not um, remaining fixed and then snapping. They, they, they are an ongoing sort of process. And so, yeah, and there's two parts to that. There's the extroverted rational part. And then there's the introverted irrational part. So the extroverted rational part, think of it as being almost like a, a dynamo or a motor or some sort of rapidly rotating paddle wheel or something like that. Some sort of motor or engine. It's very high energy and it's constantly turning over and over and over and accumulating more and more and more and more and more. Right? And then you've got the introverted irrational part. Think of this as being more like the field in which the dynamo is constantly going and acting on. So when I say a field, think of quite a fluid field, like a lake. And imagine that dynamo turning round and round and round and round, and it turns round and round and round, it whips up the water around it in the lake, gets it frothing and moving and going, leads to all sorts of effects and ripples that travel outwards across the lake. That's kind of the idea for these dynamic blockings. There's the interaction of sort of very sort of energetic turning over thing. And then you have the quite sort of fluid, languid, um, just ever sort of flowing and adapting to what's being um, exercised upon it. Um, fluidity, such as a lake. That's the introverted, irrational part. So right, so we've got those, we've got those two sort of interactions going. Um, so today, in this particular video, and I'll be covering the others later. In this particular video, I'm going to be covering extroverted thinking when it's blocked with introverted sensing. Now, first of all, I'll talk about some of the misconceptions. This is one of the least well understood, one of the most um, easily confused blockings out of all of them. And I think that comes from the need to apply judging to sensing and thinking. And that suggests um, something which is very sort of structured, very sort of order creating, quite bossy, quite about imposing that structure on others, uh, bureaucracy or militarism, very much, you know, you must inspect your boots and if it's not perfect, you're going to have to uh, go do laps or something like that. Um, very structural, very hierarchical, you could say. So that's, that's the impression people get of uh, extroverted thinking and introverted sensing. This idea of extroverted thinking is sort of the bossy, oh, I'm going to organise you, I'm going to make you how I, how I want you to be, I'm going to put things in order, um, plus introverted sensing, suggesting something that's quite almost backward, almost all about the past, and we don't like the future, we don't like new things, we're going to make things the way it's always been, so we're going to be absolute sticks in the mud, very traditional, very sort of um, uber-conservative, almost to be a point of being um, reactionary and quite rude and um, and sort of uncompromising about it. That kind of idea people get about extroverted thinking, introverted sensing. And it's not it's not accurate. It's, it's not correct. Again, I think it comes from this idea that to be judging it means that the thinking or the feeling must be extroverted. And so that means that that one, T-E-S-I, must be the, the hyperstructural one. 
if it doesn't make any sense for TE to be about structure. As we covered in Extra Bit of Thinking, it's about pragmatism. It's about how effectively and efficiently things are working. Is it working? Can we test it? Can we see how it works? Does this apply most efficiently to the situation? So nothing to do with structure. It is a dynamic, ever-changing thing. Structure isn't. It must be static. So no, th that whole idea of it, of um, what people in my space call the SDJs, actually would apply far better to SE and TI, as I covered in one of the previous videos. So no, instead, so what is TE and SI? How can it be correctly explained? Well, um, extra the thinking, of course, is that pragmatism. It is that how things are working, how to improve const constantly the efficiency of how things are working by taking in factual information um, through reliable processes to improve how we are functioning. And the other side is introverted sensing, which, as I described before, is actually about harmonizing the sensory experience of our surroundings. It is about bringing things into a natural and organic and convenient balance. So when you put these two things together, you get a sense of how well, how what the quality is of how things are working. It is the process-oriented blocking. It is about how well things are working. How can it be quite incrementally improved through observation? Observation is a very key thing here. How is it working right here, right now? How can we um, add a little bit of this and take away a little bit of that to make the process as efficient and effective as possible? So there's an accumulating of knowledge, of data, of uh, statistics on how it's working through direct observation. And that's often, I think, confused with extroverted sensing in um, Myers-Briggs uh, land. Um, and then there is the introverted sensing of reading and picking up the changes, the slight changes and variations on the local physical environment and circumstances. And from that refining and tweaking and tinkering until the process is as perfected as possible. And there's a real strong drive here for these types to do a good job in whatever they do, to really put in a decent, hard-working effort to make sure that whatever is done is done to good quality. And you can imagine craftsmen and practitioners who have developed their skills in a certain area, who've really mastered their craft, um, taking pride in doing something well and just working on it and enjoying what they do, enjoying the finessing of a certain process to its optimum efficiency. And not being someone who, once they do it, that's the only thing they do, and that's how it is set. No, but instead, wanting to learn, wanting to attend seminars, perhaps, or to or see the work of others to continuously be learning and improving and refining their craft. So that, that's kind of the idea. It's as you may have imagined, a double external pairing, like extroverted sensing and introverted thinking. But the key difference here is that rather than imposing one's structure onto the outside, of, of changing uh, the world very dramatically and very radically, instead it's more about looking at how things work and acquiring the skills and capability to, to manage that effectively and... Um, and quite conscientiously. So it's actually kind of adapting to the world in some ways and looking at what skills can be learned. How can we observe this? How can we see how it works? How can we test this? How can we put this into practice? Um, so yeah, still double external, but a very different philosophy being taken to the external. Um, and yes, the, as a result, this is not going to be the sort of pairing that gets quite gets dramatic or overly um, spiritual in its nature. It likes to uh, it likes to ask the question, can I see this in the data in front of me? Have I seen this work? Can I put this into practice? That's very important for these types, that they can be grounded in sense data, that they can actually um, test it out, um, try it out, see if it's actually working well. Um, other things I might say. Um, I can think of some real-life examples. 
you have, for instance, um, Her Late uh, Majesty, uh, Queen Elizabeth II, would have been, um, I think, S-I-N-T-E, um, very much, you know, not inclined to show drama, to, um, to stir things up, no, keep a stable, even keel, and do your job well. That's the idea. Or if you look at, for instance, um, Thomas Edison's more T-E and S-I, right? Constantly working hard, working well, trying to, uh, uh, through piecemeal data and testing and tinkering, developing a large range of different inventions um, and improving them incrementally over time. Very much the idea for this. Not about tearing things down and having to start afresh. That's very S-E and T-I. It's very static. No, it's it's the dynamic, continuous improving and making things work more efficiently and better. And yes, um, from doing this, there's also an element of self-sufficiency in these types. They want things to be working autonomously and well. They want to essentially create the right fine balance of processes that actually doesn't need constant interaction. And it doesn't need to be... Um, constant control it can just function well on its own so you can imagine sort of like the doctor who you know gives you like the prescription just to put your body right into its natural working uh, sustainability again and then it's a lot of sort of light touch it doesn't want to be too heavy-handed um, sometimes it can get overly involved especially te plus si but it doesn't particularly want to but it ends up doing it anyway sort of a micromanaging effect but what it really wants to do is to make things self-sufficient and they themselves want to be self-sufficient, to learn and acquire the skills to just operate effectively and not need someone to come in and interrupt them and waste unnecessary resources. Why, why can't I just learn the skills I need to do it myself rather than require someone else to be part of this process, to be a superfluous element in what is a very well-working system that I've put together? So yes, that's the process orientation of extroverted thinking and introverted sensing. And I'll cover the others um, later today.